Well, hello again, and welcome to the VK6CS uh, Fun with Amateur Radio channel. Okay, <clears throat> so what changes did you make to the amplifier, Steve? I hear you cry. Well, uh, uh, I'll show you. It started off as a box standard um, GS35B grounded grid, uh, grounded grid amp. So the grid was grounded. Got the cathode there. Got the heater with a uh, bifilar, bifilar choke. However, that's pronounced. I'm leaning around the tripod here, so it might look a little bit wobbly, almost as wobbly as the output waveform. That goes off to the heater transformer. Um, RF goes in there. I haven't turned the radio off again. A bit of decoupling there. <clears throat> now, the cathode on this particular valve is internally connected to one leg of the heater, like that. So the bias, I used uh, an MPN transistor that goes down there to the HT negative. There's decoupling there as well. Just a little Zener diode there, like that. Now, uh, uh, the, uh, you might see uh, many, uh, many designs just have a Zener diode there. Um, but um, by having a string of Zener diodes there on the base of an MPN transistor you can short the, the diodes out and change the bias voltage or there's a little variable device you can put in there and you can adjust it so you can actually adjust the bias voltage when you're mucking around with these things and uh, just to get the design right so uh, <clears throat> as the cathode is connected to one side of the heaters and there's a Biffler RF choke there I thought well I don't really see any point whatsoever in having a separate choke for the cathode, you know, because this RF choke is going to be such a high impedance. Uh, there might be a cap across the valve base as well uh, from one heater pin to the other just to keep the RF potential across the filament the same. Can't remember now, but there probably is. Um, and I'd seen them with a separate choke for the cathode, even though, you know, setting this DC bias up here on the cathode through the heater choke. There should be no difference between doing that and having a separate choke for the cathode. But I thought, okay, well, I'll try it because, you know, plenty of power coming out of it, but it's not a nice linear waveform. So I'll just try that. So the first thing I did was I put a choke in like that. So it had a separate RF choke. Uh, <clears throat> And perhaps not surprisingly, uh, that made no difference whatsoever. So I thought, well, okay. Now, bearing on, I'm matching the input impedance with a little um, T match. So it's not a tank circuit, it's a T match. So I thought, okay, well, I tried varying the bias voltage, and of course, you know, the more uh, the more positive you make the cathode, effectively, the more negative you're making the grid, less the valve conducts. You know, the uh, harder you got to drive it, need more anode volts to get the idling current back up again. The whole thing is, um, you know, there's a lot of variables in there. So I thought, okay, well, bias voltage was sort of picked out of the air as a fairly standard sort of bias voltage you see on these things. I can't remember what it is now, but it's. Um, um, a fairly common, uh, fairly common bias voltage. So I thought, right, let's try driving the grid and see if that makes any difference. So all I really did, well, all I did was took that off of there like that, put the RF in, put the RF into the grid like that. And an RF choke going to ground, 50 ohm resistor across there, like that, and then put a uh, 2200 puff capacitor between the cathode and ground to give the uh, uh, to give the uh, the cathode uh, a, uh, a direct RF path to ground. And uh, I thought, okay, let's try that because. Just by having an RF choke to ground and keeping this bias arrangement in the cathode, I've still effectively got a negative 
bias voltage on the grid, just as if I was putting a negative voltage in there and the cathode was DC connected to ground. And, you know, I got some power out of it, and, but the waveform still wasn't linear. So I thought, okay, let's, uh, this actually went open circuit on its own. I actually bought some of these off the internet. These were supposedly uh, 50 watt um, swamping resistors, but uh, you know, I'm a bit suspicious about that. It didn't take very long for that to go open circuit. So I thought, okay, let's match that with the little ATU. Let's match that input impedance with the little ATU. So uh, that's what I've done. And the results were shown in the previous video. The waveform, the shape of the waveform coming out of the amplifier is exactly the same. So <clears throat> uh, I'm pretty sure it's got nothing to do with the tank circuit. So I've tried different taps on the tank circuit. The capacitors are variable. I haven't tried it on a different band though, as um, uh, Al VK6KIF suggested. Maybe I should try it on 40 meters, but um, just to see if there is any difference. But uh, what, uh, what I think I shall do is, before I try the tank circuit, because I would like to keep this as simple as possible, so if I can have one variable capacitor on the input instead of two, um, and uh, a, a non-switched inductor or adjustable inductor, then I'll do it that way. If I have to do it the hard way and have separate pre-tuned tank circuits for each band, which is pretty common um, you know, on these commercial amplifiers, that's what they do. And I suspect that's probably why they, uh, why they do that. It, it has to be done that way to get a nice linear output. <clears throat> I'm just trying to make this thing uh, as simple as possible. So, And uh, perhaps not surprisingly, uh, there, there is a very good reason why they go to the, uh, the extra expense. <laughs> <laughs> putting the individual little tune tank circuits on each band uh, input but uh, I just thought well I'll try it so so the next thing I'll try is uh, probably um, a parallel tuned circuit on the on the input grid now I've seen a uh, I think it's a New Zealand guy has made a, an 813 tri connected 813 linear amp and he reckons it's an ultra linear linear amp and the way he does his RF feed is he grounds the grid so it takes the grid back to ground like that let's get rid of this can't put RF in there if we're going to do that but he has a matching arrangement that is a um, uh, it's a sort of 1.5 to 1 auto transformer um, so he has this auto transformer arrangement like that, which is only seven turns tapped at five. The RF comes in there like that. Um, it's got a variable capacitor across it like that. It goes like that. Just to broaden it out a bit, it's got a resistor across it like that. That then goes into the cathode like that. And he reckons that that input arrangement gives him an ultra linear, uh, he describes it as an ultra ultra linear amplifier. I mean, this is just doing a bit of impedance matching here, so the turns ratio might be a bit different between a, a GS35 and an 813, but um, it'd be interesting just to try that because if this doesn't need to be adjusted and there's only one variable capacitor and it gives me a linear output and a reasonable amount of output power, I would much prefer to use that than the standard tank circuit with the other adjustments or multiple tank circuits. So that's what I've got in mind. I might even try that um, on the grid as well, have that, uh, have that um, parallel tuned circuit arrangement on the grid, put the capacitor back down to ground to give the cathode an RF path to ground and do it that way. But um, that's, uh, that's what I've got in mind. So uh, that's... Uh, uh, just to give you a bit more of a, a, a clearer picture of, uh, oh, hang on, left something out there, haven't I? <laughs> That's better. <laughs> just to give you a bit of a clearer picture of, uh, of what I'm doing, or what I, what, uh, what I have in mind. So, as always, well, I hope you found that, uh, hope you found that interesting, and uh, as always, Thanks for watching, I'll, uh, I'll catch you next time.